Welcome back to our look into the more alien races and cultures in Conan. Please keep in mind, to qualify for this list, the race must be sentient and have some form of observable culture. Sources are listed below and specification has been given when theorycrafting is present. Grimdark. Half off! Another amazing look into humanity's collective psyche comes to us from the race first mentioned in Howard's God in the Bowl, published 1952. Throughout our species 2.5 million years on this rock, one of the key myths we like to tell is of a perfect or giant ancestor who taught man all that he knows today about technology and agriculture. In modern times, this comes from myths of ancient aliens as you may have seen on the History Channel, but in Conan, it comes to us in the form of the race only known as the Giant Kings. From their surviving members, throughout the exiled lands, various ancient tombs, as well as the fact that they were eventually hunted to near extinction by the ancestors of the Stygians, known as the Kari Remnants, as well as the specific ancestral line of the Lemurians that would later form Turanian culture, we can theorize that the giant king's civilization was present in the pre-cataclysmic age across Stygia, Turan, and eastern Hyperborea. Ruins have also been noted of the giant king's civilization in Namidia, the Proto-German culture of the Hyborian Age. They may have had other territories, but nothing is confirmed at this time. While they themselves are in no way ancestors of man, they fulfill the role of the myth I'm mentioning by their interactions with the human race known as the Lemurians, who in correlation with Howard's timeline would be present, or at least they would come about and be present even before the now extinct Atlanteans. And this is because the sort of theory of the Hyborian Age that is very popular and very present that Howard studied very closely was the Lemurians came, then the Atlanteans, then man as he is today. It seems that even before the exiled lands present in Conan exiles were used as a place to dump unwanted prisoners, they were still a land for refugees, which is exactly how the Giant Kings initially saw the Lemurians as. In gross contrast to the Serpent Men, the initial relations between this race and humans was to see a friend in need as a friend indeed. In response to this aid, much of the already worn down and weary humans would begin to worship the Giant Kings as gods, which more dastardly elements of their culture were quick to take advantage of. This relationship would result in many of them learning magics, advanced farming techniques, and other cultural exchanges. But as one would imagine, with humanity's fate, it came with a high price. In these savage times, no matter how good the deal looks, to put yourself in a position of dependency as the Lemurians did is to invite your own gradual enslavement. Even in slavery, or as conditions worsened for the Lemurians, more still came to the Giant Kings, who gave them food and clothes for their humiliation. Like with many abusive relationships, it was not the abuse itself that ended it, but feelings of rejection or neglect. When too many humans came in need of resources the Giant Kings no longer possessed, conflict soon broke out. The gods of the Lemurians had abandoned them, and the humans were parasitic to the Giant King people so to war they went. This is all to say nothing of the role that serpent men would play in the conflict who themselves had only been given refuge to build their last city by the grace of the giant kings. Our last video covered their serpent man city if you're interested. But they could never walk away from the ancient enemy they will always see in man. Long before the enslavement of man, the magic of the serpent men was used to summon forth a demon possessing it inside a staff which was given to the giant kings as a gift. In true serpent man fashion, this was a deception, and when the Lemurians sought out the destruction of their enemies, the demon in the staff drove the ruling body of the giant kings, known as the Triumvirate, mad. It should be mentioned at this time that this may have heavily backfired on them as evidenced by many of the undead serpent men guardians in the accursed city. It is very possible that the serpent men in some cases were also taken as slaves to fight the war with the Lemurians along with many Lemurians. One of the members of the Triumvirate, known as the Archivist, would be responsible for the magic wall that now surrounds the exiled lands and trapping the humans forever. This symbolizes the beginning of cruel Lemurian slavery at the hands of the Giant Kings, in addition to the already present weak position of man. Soon, through overpopulation, thus superior numbers, the Lemurians would slaughter the grand majority of the Giant Kings. The only known half-human, half-Giant King was Tyros the Deathbringer, which, much like human slaves, was forced from an early age into a gladiatorial arena and gives us insight into how this civilization treated those of mixed blood. If one is not a pure giant king, they are not worthy of personhood. 
Given certain larger-than-average undead warriors in the accursed city, there is circumstantial evidence to suggest that Tyros was not the only one of his kind, which if true would imply further genetic compatibility between humans and giant kings. This would also support the idea of a partial human origin and a truly alien ancestor in an as-of-yet unknown race that resembled their four-armed gods, as they simply looked like giant kings devoid of human elements. This would also be in line with what we see from the initial origins of Sligoth's Serpent Men and Dagon's Deep Ones. That is to say that Sligoth clearly had to breed with humans to create the first generation of Serpent Men before they started laying eggs, and the Deep Ones are very well known for interbreeding with humans. The reason I say Tyros is still the only hybrid is that while very likely, none of this is confirmed, and an alternate theory is that magic was used for the creation of him instead of a conventional birth. While seemingly fully extinct as a culture in the Hyborian Age, we can make out the culture's inner workings to some degree. Since this race is famous for outliving humanity while also reproducing very little, one can assume that more so than humans, their rituals and sacrifices to their gods revolved around fertility or the blessings of having many offspring. Given that humans were sacrificed on these altars and slaves were very valuable, we can assume much like old human gods, the gods of the giant kings were given sacrifices of high-value livestock or chattel. These gods are seemingly four-armed figures that may or may not have been indicative of a parent race or their possibly partial human origins. The fashion of these figures can be described as proto-Stygian, marked by specifically in their statues by the tall ornamented hats that would later be inherited by the people in question in the form of royal garb. Due to the high level of magic and technology the Giant Kings possessed, it can be easy to get the wrong idea that they were a secular advanced society, but this reveals their more superstitious nature. Regardless of their origins, these beings are quite human in mentality. Their ruling body, the Triumvirate, was divided into three positions. Given the size of the initial Giant King city present in Conan Exiles, we can assume equal roles across the ruins present in Western Nemedia, Southern Turan, and Stygia. The first is the Archivist, whose job is primarily concerned with the accumulation of knowledge, both historical and magical. The second is the Priest King, who acts as a high priest or pope of honoring their ancestors' souls and rituals dedicated to their gods. Lastly, is the conditional position of War Maker, only being used when in times of war, as the name would suggest. Clayil was called the War Maker by his people, for it was his duty to keep them safe. Under this triumvirate were most likely religious figures, mages, and warriors in equal social standing given their equal oligarchal rulers. Under them would be various castes of slaves, first being half-breeds, then being non-giant kings. However, it should be mentioned that giant king civilization does not seem to be prone to slavery normally, and the Lemurian situation had very special circumstances attached to it. This can be found as evidenced through banter and conversation you can see in the exiled lands when asking one of the giant kings you can talk to in that world about the nature of what happened back then. He sounds so distraught and overwhelmingly depressed over the whole situation, as though the situation with Lemurian slaves did come out of nowhere to them. It, it indicates that the entire culture was set to be very, I would not say nomadic, obviously, they built cities, but somewhat very isolated, very much like a Tibetan monk in a way and dealing with actual interracial relations in any way, whether with a less civilized or more civilized people, was just something the Giant Kings had very little understanding of. So having both the Serpent Men and humans around, that's just asking for trouble. Your people came to us as exiles, weary and harried. When we revealed ourselves, your people fell to their knees and worshipped us. In return, we fed and clothed you, but you came in untold numbers. We could not clothe you all, nor would we offer you of our water or our land. In time, this led to conflict, eventually to war. Though it caused us grief, we were forced to dominate you. 
Barring demonic manipulation and weird codependent interspecies relations, slavery does not appear to be part of Giant King culture. The name Clayil is one of the only true names we get for the Giant Kings, and using it as a template, we can assume the following about Giant King naming conventions. Now keep in mind, because of the incredibly small sample size of names, this is obviously theory crafting. The first is that their role or job has no effect on the name, with it being one note and separate. Much like the Serpent Men, family names or surnames are not used. The AE, along with the KLL, shows us phonetic clues to Proto-Semitic and Proto-Indian cultures. Given that their main ruins are found across the Middle East and West, we can lean more towards the Semitic side for vowels with an Indian use of consonants. The name Kalel, spelled K-A-L-E-L, as opposed to the giant king name Klael, spelled K-L-A-E-L, -E is a normal modern Indian last name. But altering the spelling to seem more angelic or Enochian, with the addition of the A-E also used in some Proto-English as well as Latin languages, we get Klael. Applying this process multiple times, we can create the following possible giant king's names from different Indian common last names. So I took a lot of Indian common last names from Google, I applied this general formula to it. And you look at a picture of a giant king as I'm saying this, you tell me if this fits. Devai from Devi, Kumair from Kumar, and Dais from Das. Keep in mind that this is only an extrapolated theory, but it seems to heavily hold up. Alternatively, I would argue that some straightforward angelic names make a lot of sense for the race. Raphael and Uriel uh, make sense to me, but it's all about what would you think would best fit the Giant King in question. Uh, one of the greatest things about the non-human races of Conan is that we will always be like amateur archaeologists looking at a newly discovered civilization for the first time. Thank you all for watching. I know I spent a lot of time talking about Conan Exiles lore. A lot of you want the deeper lore from the expanded universe and not a lot of talking about that wider Conan lore uh, that I didn't do, you know, I, I didn't do a lot of that. But this is because in this case, Conan Exiles did a lot to flesh out the Giant King civilization, including giving them this distinctive look uh, we are now familiar with, as previously they simply looked like pale or undead giants. That's the only uh, variation of them I can find outside of the games. If you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing, commenting, or using those useful links below to donate to my Subscribestar. My sources, again, link below if any of this interested you, including a much better video that goes deep into, by the way, the uh, Giant Kings... Ah, uh, do 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 the Giant Kings of Conan Exiles. If you just want to know the full story there, there was a wonderful creator who I linked below. Uh, A-G-U-D-O is how I have him listed below. That's an abbreviation for his name. Uh, so, so head on over there. And I recorded this while I was very tired, and I hope it doesn't show up that way.